Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Cool. Okay, so uh, today we're talking about something that's a, it's a very prominent question, which is, hey, Chris, I understand the structure thing, but hey, man, it, it, when we do recodes, aren't we problem solving? Who's had this thought? Of, like, Chris, I thought we're not supposed to um, problem solve. Well, what, what's the recode about then, bro? Like, isn't that contradictory? Like, what, what, what's that about? So it's very important that we understand these two different worldviews so that you can truly get it and understand it, okay? So the, the problem-solving world, um, let's also call it the victim world. Let's call it the powerless world, okay? The, this world is when you first orientate by the problem and then you want to change that problem, okay? So can everyone give me an example um, of that? right? Yeah, so you got anxiety, and you I've got anxiety, I don't want it. Yeah. Or I've got negative thoughts, and I want to fix those negative thoughts. Yeah, I've got this health condition, and I got to fix it. Yeah. So you first orientate, see the original thought, the seed of all the action has first planted the problem existing. Okay. So that's the problem orientation. Now, the problem with the problem orientation <laughs> is that the problem was the seed that motivated the action, okay? So as soon as you get a little bit away from the problem, you have no more motivation. So if over here is what you want to be healthy and over here is the problem and you go, I'm unhealthy, I'm going to do something. You move, you get motivation, you get to about here and then this motivation isn't as strong anymore. So you stop doing the action. When you stop doing the action, what happens? You end up back in the problem. Make sense? And so anytime you start by looking at the problem and trying to get away from it, you're going to find yourself get about halfway towards it. And then something will turn up to reinforce the problem because the problem has been decided that it's real in reality. Okay. You've given it energy. And so what happens is, is you have to find another problem to keep being motivated. And it really confuses people because they say, well, Chris, why would I want to create money if it's not going to make my life better? And, and, my, and why, would I, why would I want to go like all the things I think I'm going for just to solve problems? And I'm like, I know. I know they are. See, the difference is you go, you know what? I want to create this beautiful life. And when I choose, I choose this amazing home. I choose to live in this and I choose it. And then you say, well, what do I need to do that? I need to create money. But this way, you've planted a forward-focused, action-orientated end result. It's an end result that is independent of any problem. I just choose to have a healthy and vital body. Why? Because I would love that. Not because there's something wrong. You see? Now, the action could actually be the same. Okay? So one person looks at their, they, they go to put on their pants, right? They're putting on their trousers and they put on their trousers and they go, oh, gee, I hope this button doesn't break because man, I've put on, oh, this doesn't feel so good. So then they go to the gym and they start eating different. Okay, so what happens? Their waist shrinks. So suddenly they go, oh, I feel pretty good. I don't really need to go to the gym as much. I feel good. I solved the problem, you see? So then they stop doing what they were doing. And eventually what happens, guys? They end up right where they started. You see? So the action of going to the gym and eating healthy was a good action. However, because it was orientated first by a problem, okay, they can't move forward. Now people go, well, Chris, yeah, that makes sense, right? 
but I've got this anxiety, man. I've got this thing I've got to solve. I've got these negative thoughts. I can't get rid of them, man. That's what I've got to fix. And so what happens is they say, I've got to fix that. I hear what you're saying, but I just want to fix this first. So what they do is they do amazing work. They do an amazing process, okay? They go, wow, there's these negative thoughts. I want to stop them. There's these negative emotions. I want to stop them. So they do a process and those negative emotions disappear. And they go, ah, this feels so good. Now I can go after what I want. So then they start going after what they want. And guess what? More negative emotions, more things pop up. Well, I better go fix that again. And then 15 years later, they're still going to therapy sessions. 10 years later, they've been to every personal development course under the planet. Why? Because they gave the power and a belief structure that says, I've got to get rid of these things in order to go where I want. That's where the power was. Does this make sense, guys? So the power is there. So they go through the same loop. They go start moving towards what they want. Some doubt pops in. Well, I can't have doubt. So they go to fix the doubt. By fixing the doubt, they stop taking the action towards what they want, which then creates this life. Then they start again. They go for it. Then the doubt there is there again. Does this make sense? Does this make sense, guys? So do you see that reality? So that's problem reality. Now, it's very different, but it's it's all where you start from. You see, it's the first intent. What are you creating to start from? Okay. What are you, what are you, start, what are you creating? Thanks, Alex. Awesome. What are you creating? See, every, every time it's a problem, it's a loop. So it's where, so I'm wearing a, specific t-shirt today brand new t-shirt magnetic focus magnetic focus it's all about where your focus is magnetic focus and so when people ask me chris well this sounds like problem solving it's not see when we first get into creating all right as you're creating big results guess what There will be resistance, okay? That resistance, you will need to treat down. The action will look the same, but it's from a different orientation. See, going to the gym looks the same. However, if you're going to the gym because you, you don't want to, you know, because of this problem, to solve this problem, very different to... I want to be healthy and the direct instruction I'm getting is why well, I need to go to the gym. Does this make sense? So when you go for what you want, a negative belief can still show up. I don't think I can do it. Well, that's when we treat it, but we're treating it in service of an end result. We're not just treating it in service of a problem. See, the intent that's the motivator behind the action is the most important thing. And the question is, is where is your focus? If your focus is on, I want to go and create this amazing big thing, or I want to create a happy, healthy family, or I want to create a, he a healthy body, or I want to be an amazing speaker, or I want to be this, or I choose to be this, or I'm choosing this, I'm choosing to create a farm, or I'm choosing to create, where's Alexi? Alexi is choosing to create an amazing bonsai farm, right? And so we, when we step in that, then we go, oh, but I can't because of, you see, or I, I shouldn't, or I don't have enough time. Then that's when we get to treat what's in the way, you see. So it's not problem solving. It's clearing the path to where we need to go. You see, now, it, it, some work would just say, we'll just ignore it, right? To me, what I found is trying to just ignore it was very difficult. I needed a way to turn down the volume. Does that make sense? Turn down the volume. And what I found is the more I put the power in my end results, 
the more that I just followed through, the more that I turned down the volume with each recode, I turned it down. My new orientation was just on the end result. You see, I no, I no longer worried and that none of this ever was there anymore. Does that make sense? Or if it was there, it was very quiet. So I tuned in, I stepped in and I took action. So can everyone really see or hear or even just witness a massive difference between the problem solving orientation and the creation orientation? And can you all realize that the action could be the same action? You might still need to go and read a new book or get a mentor or have a coach. You might still do the same thing, you see, that you would have done anyway, but, but you're not worried about whether you would have done it or not anyway. It's about how you're orientating. And when you're orientating with a forward focus creation, you will find that you get to move towards it. And there's only one elastic band, which is around where you're going versus having two elastic bands, one which you're trying to get away from that's holding you there. You see, very important to become a creator. Very important to become a creator. Now, the first way to become a creator, okay? The first way is to make sure that you're orientated into the predominant creative force in your life. This is the first step, okay? The predominant creative force, what this means is you don't have moments where you're not in charge of how you're feeling. When you're the predominant creative force in your life, everything or anything can be going wrong and you're like a stoic just choosing how you want to feel. You're smiling when things aren't turning out the way you want. And you're smiling the same when they are turning out how you want. You don't change. You become the predominant creative version of yourself. You become the creative force in your life. Does this make sense? That is number one. Number two, once you're in charge of how you feel, number two, you choose to experience health and vitality. You see, that's the, you choose it. You orientate that you are healthy and vital right now. And you're acting in alignment with that. The third is you're choosing to love your life. And the fourth is you're choosing to live your true nature and purpose. All four of these are free. All four of these are accessible all the time. Does this make sense, everyone? That's when you orientate. That is just shifting. That is when you get to be it so that you can see it. You see, those are the first four choices. Those are the first four choices. Because if you're still not the predominant creative force, if you're still um, falling off into victim patterns or falling into frustration or misery or things that you don't desire, then you're not it. If you're not feeling healthy and vital and, and following through on that, you're not it. If you're not finding ways to be in your truest nature and purpose, being the creative spirit, then you're not it. If you're, if you're not saying, I love my life, then you're not it. See, these get you into the place where you get to be it. What this does is it means you own the moment. You own the moment and you're no longer uh, needing things to complete yourself. Ryan's got a good question. How do you stay with that resolve when tangible elements in life and business are spiraling down? Yeah, it is not easy. It is not easy. But the 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 biggest gift I ever got was, um, you know, my, my business partner had died. I'd lost my whole business had fallen apart. I had to borrow money from my mom. Uh, Harriet and I were fighting. Um, just, just everything went wrong. And, um, you know, I was sitting by this, this lake. I was living 
um, for the time I was back in New Zealand, I was living with a friend of ours. And uh, so why everything was getting all good, trying to fix everything. And I just went down and I remember sitting by this lake, like hundreds of thousands, nearly a million in debt, just so much noise and pressures and, you know, banks and lawyers and clients annoyed just just everyone was annoyed at me uh, or us so, I mean it was just and I just sat there by this lake and I and I just I just remember going is, is this the worst it could get because here I am and uh you know there's a free lake I'm sitting next to and look at this moment and I and I cried eh I cried because I was like I was like oh okay, take my best friend, you can take all my money, you can take my cred, you know, you can trash me all over the internet, you can have all my favorite clients annoyed at me, I have to like humbly ask my mom to money for this, my staff are annoyed at me, you know, like, oh, it was crazy. I was like, oh. So, so to answer your question is, uh, that's when you arrive at the hardest times when you get to go, I can still, you know, and I remember I rung Harriet and I said, oh, let's, you know, let's go get a bowl of wine. And we didn't talk about any of the stuff's gone wrong. We just sat there with like, a, I don't know, it was like six or seven dollar bowl of wine and we just connected. It was just like, well, you know, whatever. So to answer your question, it's, it, it, it's by choosing to. It's choosing to have it regardless of what's outside of you. Because then the, the converse happens as well. Is, uh, is, is, uh, is how do you stay the same when it's all going right? Does that make sense? Where's he at? Ryan, how do you, so my question is, is how do you be exactly the same when it's all going right as well? You see, because it's actually the same. The, the way that you uh, orientate to success is the way that you orientate when it's going wrong. Yeah, yeah, it will be the same. And, and no one else, he said, yeah, I struggle with that too. It's the same because you're holding the same end of vibration. You know, you can't pick up one end of the stick without picking up the other, right? So you can't love success if you don't hate failure. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing. You can't, you can't have hot without cold, you see, you pick them up. And so when you acquiesce to the moment, when you, you know, you just go, I'm going to feel good no matter what, I'm going to live my true nature. My true nature is to be a teacher. I'm going to teach no matter what, you know, I'm going to be healthy and vital. I'm going to feel healthy and vital. As long as I've got, you know, air in my lungs, I'm going to feel it, you know, I'm going, I'm going to love the moment no matter what. That's that is when that is when you get it. Who's enjoying this today? Give me a yes if you are. That's when you get it. Let's get some energy in the chat box. Who's enjoying it? You're getting it. So you shift into going to this place. Well, oh, well, if I have a million, that'd be that'd be fine. If I lose, if I lose it, that'd be fine. You know. It's like you just, it's, you, the, the wind, it's just, you just be it. And when you be it, it you're just, uh, it's just this, these, these extra fun games, these fun things or whatever, you know? It's like, you just, you just get to, um, you get to be it, you know? And, and that's when you're the powerful creator, hey? And that's when you're a powerful creator. That's, that's when you're that, when you're like, oh, wow, cool, I'm a creator now. I'm a creator. And when you're a creator, you already got it. So now... Now you're simply just creating because it, because you choose to. Does this make sense? You're just creating because you choose to. Oh, cool! I choose to create. So I, I choose. I'm choosing to create this 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 huge conscious education company, right? Conscious education. I'm choosing to create this huge. That's what I'm choosing to see. Just choosing it. You know, doesn't change me at all. It's just choosing it. You know, I'm choosing to create a, an amazing marriage, a property portfolio. I'm choosing 
I'm choosing to, to create this amazing book that I'm writing at the moment and just, just choosing it. And I'll just still be me, you know, I'll still be me and I'll still have all the normal things. And that's what's so important about understanding the shift in orientation. So it's not problem solving. It's not problem solving. It's creating. And as you're creating, you will need to clear the way of old patterns of information that have been useful in the past. Beliefs are just decisions that were useful in the past. I want you to just own that for a second. Beliefs are just decisions that were useful in the past. It's just past information. If you were seven years old and uh, you made some amazing art and you ran home and you said, Daddy, Daddy, look, look, look at this art I made. And he's had a bad day at work. And he, and he looks, he goes, why are you wasting your time on that? That will get you nowhere. Go and do your homework. Throws it aside. A useful belief at that point might be, well, I shouldn't do that because I want dad's validation. So I'm going to go do this. I'm not going to do my art. You see, is it necessarily useful anymore? No, but it was useful. We don't have to judge it. It was just there. It was useful. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's useful. And so when we, we think about beliefs, they're just beliefs that are useful in the past. You might have used to think that making more money will make you happy. That's fine. A lot of us are told that, you know, getting a good college degree means, means you're safe. You might have thought that might have been useful, okay? So, so beliefs, beliefs are just decisions that were useful in the past. Just useful. And so we don't have to judge them. We just simply ask ourselves, okay, as I'm as I'm moving forward towards what I want, well, there'll, there's some old beliefs that used to be useful either in my past experience passed down to me or that I've, I've just somehow uh, imported from the, you know, the superconscious. Yeah. So the question we must ask ourselves, okay, was is what are we? Because if we're not the, if we're not our, if we're not our results, if we're not our money, if we're not our body, what are we? And it's a very interesting question, one that I was discussing this morning with the, the certification group. Well, what are we? What at, what are we? You know, am I really just this collection of bones and blood and organs and 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 thoughts? What what are we? And the, the more that you think about that, you know there's something special going on of infinite intelligence is keeping your heart beating and doing everything right. You, we all know that we're more than this. We know it. Scientists can't explain it. They don't know it from the Big Bang. They don't know where 99% of the matter is. You know, what's the matter with that? There isn't any. Think about it. There isn't any. And so the more they look, the more that they, they see space. And so... Uh, it's very interesting to ask ourselves this question, what are we? Well, what we do know is that we're, you know, we're made up of atoms. Okay? Atoms are made up of, of all sorts of different protons and neurons and a nucleus. And, and, and as you build it right down, what they find is, is an atom is made up of electrons. And the small, one of the smallest units is really a photon. But what really is a photon other than a unit of light? It's very interesting. The more they look at it, the more they find nothing they find nothing and and i was talking about an experiment earlier today do you guys want to hear a, a little bit uh do you guys want to hear that's a very interesting question i can't i can't avoid this question do you worry that the flow will get boring it sounds lovely but i want to keep creating and it seems uh, it takes resistance to create the identity has all sorts of really messed up beliefs like flow is boring and that uh if i don't have problems how am i motivated and all sorts of these things 
all sorts of these things that wants to hold on tight to its worldview. Creating is the most, the most inspiring, fun thing. Imagine if you lived in a worldview that without resistance, life is boring. You see, as whenever you're creating, when you're in flow and you're going for things, the excitement and joy and wonder of turning thoughts into things and making this and creating that is so much fun. It's so much fun. And it's the way we're supposed to be orientated as adults. Well, not all as magicians, really. <laughs> if we really think about it, I mean, if you, you go into it as true, it's not this, this knowledge that, uh, that I'm talking about is, is never, it's never really being taught openly. Hey, you know, really, you know, where I get a lot of my information from is very, very, very uh, hidden places. It's um it yeah it's very interesting but 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 at the the top end of creation people that are really building this planet and had this information is there and so it's so important hey that you really go wow isn't that an interesting belief you know especially from someone as powerful as you isn't that an interesting belief to to be there let's create you know let's go for it you see the worry but what if it's boring. See how much like fear there is about just being a creator, just going for it, you know? What if it's not? What if it's just the most exciting thing ever in the history, you know? <laughs> so we go for it. So when we think about what we are, we break it down. What they find is that uh, that really we we where nothingness, there's nothing there, the more they look at it. But I want to share a, an experiment or who's heard of the double slit experiment before? I was talking about this earlier today, so it's going to be easy for me to, to reshare it. If you haven't heard of the double slit experiment, it's about 100 years old, okay? It's about 100 uh, years old, and, and it helps us to understand what we are. Okay, so at the smallest unit of what we are, we're made up of photons. So what this experiment did, okay, is it had a photon gun here. And it was shooting photons out. There was a divider here and it had two slits that the, that the photons could go through. And then it had photogenic paper here. Photogenic, okay. And so what happened was they fired the photons out, okay? And if they closed one, one split, what happened was is they would get what you'd expect shooting a photon. You'd get a line of photons here. And then if they closed the other one, they would get a, a line of photons here like this, okay? And it was all, it was all very obvious, okay? It was all very obvious. Now... What was interesting is they went, oh, okay, so photons are, it must be one of the smallest uh, units that we have, smallest units of matter. And so something interesting happened, okay? When they stopped observing it, when they stopped observing it, it changed. When they came back, instead of just being two lines, there was darker lines, and then there was, there were two darker lines, and then there was varying degrees of lines after that, okay? They had the same, the same thing set up. They just left it on without consciously measuring it. So, well, so what created the change? How could, when they were looking at it, did it, observe, did it turn out one way? And then when they stopped looking at it, it go another way. Well, the Copenhagen interpretation of this was that the act of observation turned the wave of the photon into a particle. See, if it was acting like a wave, the waves would bounce off each other and would create what you'd expect from a wave. Does this make sense? Okay, a wave. So it acts like a wave in both instances. So it might even have waved this way as it goes through the two slits, the waves bang into each other and do all sorts. 
But then every time that they measured it with their own consciousness or a measurement device, it acted again with just two lines. Type in the yes if you think that's pretty amazing that a photon, just by them looking at it, went from a wave when they looked at it into a particle. Wave to a particle, wave to a particle, wave to a particle. So really interesting. Now, just a caveat, they don't actually know whether they were collapsing the photon from a wave to a particle, or if it was actually the, the uh, consciousness impacted the field that the photon was in. Uh, however, the Copenhagen theory was the first one, and it's the one that, that most uh, agree with. Uh, but there's a unified field theory as well that actually um, believes that, yes, this result did happen, but not because of the photon changing. It was the field that changed. But anyway, anyway, here's what we can know is that what we're made up of, what we're made up of at the base element is, a, is light, okay, or a photon. Now, through a process of measuring, that photon turns from something that's a wave into a particle. It's basically observed into reality. Now, uh, to finish off this, if you ever, you've ever seen a drawing of you know, an atom and it looks kind of like uh, planets going around the sun, right? Have you guys all seen that? Give me a yes if you have. It's like, it's actually nothing like that at all. That's just the drawing of it, okay? Can you type this in? Probability cloud. Probability cloud. What it actually is, is a probability cloud of all sorts of different places it could be. And then when it's looked at or, or measured, it actually collapses into a particle. So... What you are at the base of all the base, base units, you are a energy signature. At some level, you are nothing but a creative energy force that something known as consciousness has observed into physical reality. What is that something? What is that something? That something is different for all of us, or we'd all look the same. See, it's collapsed light to turn into what we call Chris Duncan, what we call you. It's collapsed it. So this is called collapsing the wave function. Okay. What you are at the base of all the base is actually unlimited possibilities of light until the superconscious has decided this is the way to be. At the base of everything, what first creates it all is the field. The superconscious field takes you from unlimited wave of possibilities and collapses you. See, the superconscious is information. It's insight. But do you know what it is? It's instructions. The superconscious has instructions passed down through your family genes, passed down through the humanities or humans superconscious field into an exact particle which is you that makes up you so when we make huge shifts and huge changes what we must go to is we must go to that set of instructions we must go to that set of instructions that's collapsing infinite possibilities into you. And those infinite possibilities, when we connect, when I connect to your superconscious, takes this whole amount of possibilities and says, this is what it is. And then what do we do is we go out into the superconscious and we say, hey, you know that belief there about uh, money being hard? Let's shift that. Does this make sense? Let's go here and then let's, let's shift it. Now, can you see how this isn't problem solving? You're a creative energy source. You're the creative force. 
and creative specifically meaning you are the creative force that took all the information all the fucking possibilities of light and you your superconscious turned it into you turned it into your belief it's freaking amazing and when we connect back into that and i create those instructions for you allow me to connect there with you we're not problem solving anything we're not problem solving a single thing we're recreating by shifting the instructions that first created you see original creation original thought that signature that we call you the hue right the hue what's a hue a hue is a is a light form the hue man the first freaking waveform you're literally a waveform just sort of oscillating around on some sort of weird vibration we can go back and shift those instructions so it's obvious to me when we do this work you know someone regains their eyesight or loses weight it's just small stuff it's not even it's because we're connecting to the the instructions right at the beginning and so it's simply just trivial these little problems that we think are problems that actually just our unconscious following the instructions it's actually just the unconscious following the instructions that have been sent to it see the unconscious is just it's just doing what it was said you know it got given these instructions it built a body based off the instructions and then it had experiences it got a mother and a father and it realized i need to do this to get mom's love and do this to get dad's validation so it got more instructions and so it followed those instructions and then it got told hey don't do this and so it followed those instructions and and thinking for yourself don't do that and imagination don't do that so it followed those instructions and followed those instructions and then we become adults and we go hey hey unconscious Stop following the instructions that we we told you to follow. And we have this cognitive dissonance where we, we want to make more money, but our instructions that have been given to our unconscious are simply in opposition to that. And so then we create a whole idea that we're going to try to go and fix it instead of going for what we want and just shifting and changing. We don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's only certain things we need to shift or change to create. And once we do this, we shift through the wizard's gate. We, we accept the core for we we become a predominant creative force in our life we we literally live our true nature and purpose we choose that we are healthy and vital and we we choose to to live that true nature and purpose and then we go for it and then we go for it and that is what this world needs i don't think that it's a mistake that at the same time the world is going through such pain that at the same time this level of work is being released to the masses because the books that I read and I'm talk, listening to and the people I'm talking to, they keep on saying that this was secret and this thing and this was never shared here and this is what you get at this degree of this thing and this is what you get here and they're explaining it all that used to be so hidden and now we're saying this is it, this is how you create. So I think it's all just absolutely perfect and so when someone says to me chris isn't what you're doing problem solving i just say no <laughs> usually i don't have 40 minutes to explain it it's creating because all we actually ever are are creating all we ever are, are creating and so the choice is yours right captain planet so it's just choosing it's just choosing you are nothing but a uh, photon of information that's collapsed itself from all possibilities into a certain structure of energy that's dancing its way through 80 90 100 120 years of experiences just to return to possibility and start again and so it simply doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter it you know it's funny that we say that it doesn't matter it doesn't light <laughs> which which option you choose or experience as superconscious is simply just a field of information that's there to give you whatever you choose and having a working uh connection or working relationship with the superconscious is uh is the most important thing you can do if you want to create a life you love if you want to create a life you love
So it's very, very, very important. So here's what I want us to choose. Choose to be the powerful creator of your own freaking reality. Accept that on some level you've created everything. If you don't accept that you've created everything up until this point, you're simply denying that you are the super conscious. If you don't accept, and I really want you to hear this, if you don't accept that you've created everything up until this point, you're denying that you are the super conscious, you see? So it's time to choose to live from a new orientation. Everything's absolutely as it should be. Absolutely as it should be. How do I know that? Because it is. And so it's our time to choose. It's our time to choose.